What's up guys, welcome back to a brand new video. Today we're looking at probably the most frequently ridden PEV in my car shed. That's right, today we're looking at an electric unicycle, not just any electric unicycle, we're looking at the InMotion V12 High Torque. I'm riding a unicycle with my pants down. Scotty. Who's Scotty? Before we get into the video though, my name is Scott Davies. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, I love to make weekly content. I review everything from electric skateboards, electric bikes, electric unicycles, electric scooters, tech, holiday vlogs, you name it, we try and film it. If you're into that sort of thing and you like what you see, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit the thumbs up if you find this interesting or helpful. And if you really want to, hit that notification bell. That way you don't miss any future uploads. But enough talking, let's jump straight into the video. Let's get the HT out of the car and let's go for a ride. I'll tell you what I love about this unicycle. And I'll tell you a couple of really small opportunities that I think would take this from a great PEV to a insanely awesome top tier grab it every time unicycle. Ah, but before we do, let's get into the right gear. Hang on. Electric unicycle safety gear, go! Woo! All right, gloves, padded jacket, elbows, back, knee pads, helmet, we're good to go. Let's rock. Okay, so let's start the video. We're gonna break this video up into on-road and off-road today because the V12 High Torque can do it all. I'm gonna cover off about what I love about the wheel and I'm gonna talk about a couple of really small opportunities that I think if they were able to address would really lift the, um, I don't know, just the satisfaction of this wheel. Morning. So first things first, let's start off with the, the boring stuff. It's a 1750 watt hour battery. I've been told it's Samsung 50G cell. So they're a good quality cell. They're not a no brand, which is a big plus. The motor is 2800 watts and it is a high torque motor. And I can tell you, compared to the high speed, you can feel the difference. But I'll talk about that a little bit later on and why I actually sold my high speed and got the high torque. It's an IPX5 waterproof rating. Okay, so now let's talk about the mode of the room and the tire. As I said, it's 2,800 watts high torque. The rim is reinforced. It's stronger than the high speed. And you do need that on this type of wheel because you are going to want to take it off road. You're, wanna, you're gonna want to challenge your boundaries and skip over rocks and jump up curbs and that sort of thing. The tire is 16 inches round, three inches wide. It's nice and thick with really good traction. And as far as describing the tire, I would call it an enduro tire. It's both on-road and off-road. It can handle paths like this really nicely. It sticks, it's not slippery, like some knobby tires, but then you get it off road and dirt, loose sand, gravel, it does a really good job as well of gripping and keeping you upright. Okay, the next point I wanna talk about, and it's quite, it's quite a big one, especially if you're new to the sport, and that's the portability of the V12 high torque. It's only 29 kilos. Now I know that's a big number, and for some people that's quite heavy. But 29 kilos for a wheel that has this performance, this amount of torque, it's good. A lot of that weight is the high torque motor, a lot of that weight is the battery. So if you went any lighter, you would have to sacrifice performance or range. Now this wheel with me on it, 100 kilos, I can get close to 90 kilometers range riding it reasonably hard, on-road and off-road. I have seen some tests where people have got a lot more range than that, but they're lighter, and they weren't really pushing it that hard. Okay, now before we go off-road, I wanna talk about something else, and the reason why this is my personal wheel and why I grab this the most. 
and it's because of the extras. It's the, the little things that they've put on and added that make this the wheel that I grab. And I'm gonna talk about them right now, really quickly. The first thing, the touch screen. Now I'll do a close up or a B-roll of that so you can see it better. But having that touch screen means you can operate this wheel fully without an app. The only thing you need to do is connect an app when you first buy it brand new to unlock the wheel and to, to activate it. Extra I really like is the headlight. Now I know all EUCs have headlights, but this has a quad beam headlight, 12 watts in total, has a high, has a low, and has an all. So you go top beams, bottom beams, all beams. And at nighttime, this is a very good headlight. While we're talking about the headlight, let's move on to the LEDs. And again, the built-in LEDs are a really nice touch. They've got a circular LED here, they've got the front up and down, and they've got the rear up and down, which also doubles as the brake lights. So even if they're green when you're riding, when you brake, they flash red. Now I know that might seem like a funny add-on, but it's additional safety at nighttime. When you're riding, vehicles, people, scooters, whatever can see you from front, side, and rear. And that's a big deal for me when I'm riding at nighttime. And the last one, and probably my favorite add-on, is the built-in speakers. This has got built-in Bluetooth speaker system, and it's actually got eight speakers in the body. Four at the front, four at the rear. I'm hoping you can hear it. Not bad, right? One small little oversight I feel is they, they face outwards and not upwards to where the rider is. But when you're cruising along and you have the volume on about 80%, you can hear it clear as day. It's very clean, there's not much distortion. I like it. It's the second best speaker system on any EUC. I don't think the 16X from Kingsong will ever be better. going off-road now which truth be told is my favorite place to ride these things especially if you've got enough torque and enough power to have a bit of fun and when I say have fun I mean get over obstacles you don't have to hop off every time you come up to a, a pretty big tree root that might be sticking up 10 15 centimeters six or so inches the torque on the v12 allows you to do that you can use your pads if you've got them if you don't grip on as best you can, run into something, and just use the power of that motor to pop you over it. It does quite a good job of getting you over those types of obstacles. I get asked quite a lot is what is a good beginner EUC and I have two answers for that my first one is if you're not sure if you don't like to commit to things go something small something cheap make sure you can actually do it like a 16s or a v8f or 18xl something like that if you enjoy a challenge and you have good balance and you know you are going to love the sport or you want to love the sport or you don't quit this the v12 high torque in my opinion is an all-around wheel for a number of reasons number one it's got adjustable pedal height this means when you're learning you can lower those pedals down it makes getting on and off so much easier and the difference is a good inch and a bit the second reason i rate this for a good beginner wheel is because you're not gonna outgrow it really easily. I ride almost every day, 
and I have yet to overpower it. Now I'm not pushing it to its limits every day, but I am 100 kilos and I ride it up some pretty steep hills. The steepest so far has been about 30%, 30 degrees, 30%, 30 degrees, 30 degrees. And I've yet to have a warning. So it's something you can really grow into, learn to love, raise the pedals up when you're a bit more experienced or you want to go off road. For me, this is a wheel that you buy and you kind of keep for a very long time until you either destroy it or you do want to upgrade to maybe something with suspension. Now let's talk about hill climb ability because this wheel has yet to let me down. This is pretty steep right here, about 26% roughly. And I'm just cruising. No problems, no warnings. And I've seen plenty of videos online of it doing its claimed 45 degrees. Those crazy guys in Europe have those river banks, those paved river banks they can ride up. The V12 High Torque, again, in my opinion, really does live up to its name of High Torque. Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about before we move on to the summary and, and share with you my three pet peeves about the V12 High Torque, I want to talk about it's nimbleness. I like to call it nimbility. This is a really nimble wheel. Considering what it's capable of, you can take it on tracks like this and have a lot of fun because you've got a reasonably lightweight wheel and you've got a lot of torque, so you can have a lot of fun. So I'm gonna follow this track now. I've ridden it once before on a skateboard. I'm gonna put some music over it. Let's see how nimble the V12 high torque can be. Three, two, one, go! And it's a ticket talking miser for the figures. That's a comma and a comma and a comma. Gotta get it, get it. And it's a ticket talking miser for the figures. That's a comma and a comma and a comma. Gotta get it. I'm a comma and a comma and a comma. Gotta get it, get it. Get it, comma and a comma, gotta get it, get it, and it's a ticket, talking miser for the biggest. It's a comma and a comma and a comma, gotta get it. I'm a comma and a comma and a comma, gotta get it, get it, get it, get it, comma and a comma, gotta get it. Now Sanders looks dry on top, but it is a little bit moist underneath. And it's a ticket, talking miser for the biggest. It's a comma and a comma and a comma, gotta get it. I'm a comma and a comma and a comma, gotta get it, get it, get it, get it, comma and a comma.
I call that nimble. I don't know if you do, comment below what you think. Now I'm an average rider. Imagine this with a good rider. Man, that could be a fun track to do time trials on. <sighs> Heart rate's up too. All right, now let's talk about the trolley handle because it's a thing that I think quite regularly gets overlooked and people don't put enough weight on a good trolley handle. This one, little button under here, and it just lifts straight up. You flick that lever up and you can walk this into the supermarket and it just, I don't know, it feels like a motorized piece of carry-on luggage. I do recommend keeping it tight. If you do have a slip or a fall and you get any movement, keep it tight because once it's loose, it will do metal fatigue where those bolts go in and then you'll never get it tight again. So if it ever gets loose, just give it a few turns of your screwdriver, keep it nice and tight, and that way you'll always have a really usable trolley handle. All right, now it's time for my pet peeves, the things I that frustrates me about this wheel because I love it so much. And then every time I ride it, these little things frustrate the hell out of me. The first one, the touch screen. It's amazing that it's there and I love it. It's just such an awesome piece of technology but it's finicky. You need to be almost millimeter perfect where you touch on the screen to access the settings or to change certain things. If there was a way they could fix that, awesome, do it. The next one, the power switch. Great location, all that drama, high talk, it's orange, I like the color coding, but you have to stand the wheel up to turn it on. You come out, you wanna go for a ride, turn it on like you do every other wheel and stand it up and it balances. This one, it will not turn on unless it's in the outright position. So you gotta stand it up and then turn it on. Again, not a massive deal, not a deal breaker. Learn to live with it, that sort of thing. But I think, comment below if I'm wrong, every other wheel, every wheel I've ridden, you can turn it on while it's in its resting position, whether it be on a stand or even lying down. Okay, the next two are, are really minor and it's hardly even worth mentioning, but I'm going to. Whew. The stand on the high torque doesn't clip into position. On the high speed, it, it clipped in. On the high torque, it doesn't. My last point, it's a secondary item, is the split pads. Absolutely love them. I've got them on my V12, as you can see. But you'll notice I'm missing the back ones. Why? Their Velcro does not stick well to the pads. And after the second ride, the Velcro just falls off. It's a bit frustrating. We the top tier. UGK the major. We not play it. It don't stop here. Traffic lights. We going. Know the time until the clock. Yeah. Let's on roll. We doing digi to the whole block. Clear. Yo, what you got there? Oh, did you not hear? We be taking over and we got the whole shop. Yeah. Her, she want to know me better, but I'm on the top tier. Got to match my energy. You see, I'm in the top tier. Yeah, yeah, it's top tier. All right, gang, that's the end. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, hit the thumbs up button if you've enjoyed this content and found it useful or helpful. If you are new here and you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. We're really growing this channel nicely. We've got loads more Eastgate, EUC, PEV Tech, and the Vegas vlogs coming very, very soon. Just got a piece of wood stuck in my tire. I knew it would happen on this bark. But that's the end, guys. If you've got any comments or questions, put them down below. If you agree or disagree with anything I've said, comment below. Let's have a discussion. I love a healthy debate. If you think there's a better wheel out there that delivers this performance at this price point, comment, tell me, I want to hear about it. play it, it don't stop here. Traffic lights, we going, know the time until the clock. Yeah, on roll, we doing digi to the whole block. Clear, yo, what you got there? But that's it. So skate safe, ride safe, wear a helmet, and we'll see you on the next video. The high torque motor has because oh, oh, shit.